Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. Today is day 15, and we're wrapping up our introduction to Russian verb conjugation. The past two days, we've been looking at verb types that take the so-called your endings. Uh, today, we're looking at some major types that take e endings, right? So we're switching gears a little bit and adding a separate, um, a different set of endings to the verbs we're looking at today. Before we talk about that in more detail, let's revisit this issue of um, stress patterns in verbs uh, with examples from the types we'll be seeing today. This is especially important for these verbs uh, we're seeing today, and uh, we'll understand that more later down the road, right? Uh, when we get to participles, that'll be in book three, we'll talk about how to form participles, which are basically uh, adjectives and also actually um, adverbs from uh, that are formed from verbs. And we'll see that when we form verbal adjectives from these verbs we're learning today, uh, this issue of stress will also be very important. So in essence, uh, it doesn't concern us much today, but uh, just looking forward, the stress pattern in uh, these verbs we're learning today are uh, especially important. But if we look at the examples, we see that there's nothing uh, new going on here. What we said the other day is still true, that there are only three possible stress patterns for Russian verbs in their conjugated forms, right? Starting with stem stress, right? Uh, here we see uh, the name of our new verb type today, e verbs, right? We have three e verbs here. The first one is advietit. And by the way, if we look at that infinitive, we see something that we also pointed out previously, that the infinitive shows stem stress, right? That is, the, the stress is not on the final syllable of the infinitive. It's back on the stem. And uh, wherever we see that kind of infinitive, we can be certain about the stress pattern. So that's a really important um, rule of thumb, right? Uh, we don't have to worry. We don't have to look up in a dictionary to see uh, you know, what the stress pattern is. It's going to stay where it is on the stem. So from advietit, we get отвечу, отвечиш, отвечит, отвечим, отвечите, отвечит. Note the stress. Okay, if we uh, look forward a bit, we can see sort of what's going on here. You see our new endings, most of which are marked not by a ye yeah or a yo, but by an e, right? That's why we call them e endings. And we also notice that in this verb, we're getting a mutation in the ya form only, right? You see there the, the te has become a che, but in all the remaining forms, it's back to te. Uh, so more on that in a moment. Let's look at uh, another verb, govarit, also an e verb. Um, and this shows in stress. Now let's take a moment and compare this second verb, govarit, to the third and final verb, paluchit. And we see that in the infinitives, the stress is on the final syllable. And in that case, uh, there's some ambiguity, right? Which stress pattern is, are these verbs going to follow? Now remember, think back to advietit, there we could be certain that it's going to follow the stem stress just from looking at the infinitive. But again, we look at these two uh, following verbs, govarit, paluchit, the stress is on the final syllable. Uh, we actually don't know what um, pattern it's going to follow. It could be in stress, right? Namely, the stress is going to stay on that final syllable that is on the ending throughout all the forms. Or it's going to be in stressed in the ya form, but then shift back, right? As we know, it's going to follow the shifting stress pattern. So again, if the final syllable of an infinitive is stressed, we can't know the stress pattern, uh, especially for the, this, this verb type right now. Uh, okay, so uh, let's look at gvarit. Uh, that's going to follow in stress, and you see how we've marked that in the tag, right? We've written an e and then followed by a little uh, superscript superscript end, right? That means end stress. Gvaril, gvarish, gvarit, gvarim, gvaritie, gvariat. Okay, what about shifting stress? Poluchit. Okay, again, we can't tell that uh, stress pattern simply by looking at the infinitive, so we've marked it. We've marked it as an e verb, and then in the superscript there, we've, we've noted shift. That's telling us this is a shifting stress verb. That gives us paluchu, right, on the ending, but then shifting back, paluchish, paluchit, paluchim, paluchtia, paluchit. Uh, 
Now, again, we're not covering the imperative formally yet, but we, we've gone ahead and included those three imperatives in our verb tables. And if we look at those quickly, we see another reason why stress is particularly important for these verbs we're seeing today, right? Because it also the stress pattern also affects the, um, the imperative form. So, for example, look at from advietis, with the stem stress, we get advietis, right, advietis. But if we look over at uh, the following two verbs, gvarit, that gives us gvariu, and gvari, right? And poluchit gives us poluchu, and in turn poluchi, right, as our imperative, receive. Okay, let's do an exercise that's really easy, but it's extremely important because, again, the stress can seem so overwhelming that, uh, you know, if we can say anything meaningful about it, uh, it's, it's extremely useful to uh, remember, right? So let's look at a few infinitives and just see if, whether looking at the infinitive alone, we can guess the stress pattern for the verb. Okay, let's start with platit. Okay, the stress is on the final syllable, so the answer is no. We have no idea. Uh, from the infinitive alone, whether that's going to be in stressed or shifting stress. Now, we do know in either case that the ya form will be in stressed, right? So we know for certain that the ya form will be plachu, right? But then the question is, will the tu form be platish or platish? And we really have no way of knowing that. Okay, moving along. But I see it, same problem, right? We know the first singular will be prashu, but uh, the t, right, will it be prosish or prasish? We have no idea based on the infinitive. Okay, but the third one, gatovic, it the uh, infinitive is already stem stressed, right? And uh, regardless of the type of verb, that allows us to know uh, with certainty that the uh, stress pattern will be stem, right? That the, the stress is going to stay there where it is on the infinitive, uh, throughout all the other forms. So that'll give us katovriu, katovish, katovit, and so forth. Okay, number, uh, the next one, poluchit. No, we don't know, right? We know it will be ya poluchu, I will receive, but we don't know, is it paluchish or poluchish, right? Could be shifting stress, could be in stressed. Okay, what about advietit? Yes, it's already on the stem. We know it's going to stay there everywhere. Advietu, advietish, advietit, and so forth. That's stem stress. Okay, what about pomnit? Again, stem stress, right? We can be certain that's going to be stem stress. Uh, so we don't have to worry at all about the stress pattern. Pomnit, 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 etc. And finally, kupit. Okay, there's the problem again. We don't, we don't know. We know that it's going to be yakupliu, I will buy. But what next? Kupish or kupish? We have no way of knowing. Okay, so the obvious uh, issue here is that if the infinitive happens to end, uh, happens to be stressed on the final syllable, I'm going to have to tell you, hopefully I won't forget, uh, what uh, stress pattern the verb follows, right? Because you have no way of knowing. Um, so we'll see that in a moment. I'm, I'm going to mark, well, we've seen it already. I'm going to mark verbs like that that are ambiguous in that sense uh, using superscript, right? I'll put end or shift. Uh, just to uh, tell you uh, very succinctly what stress pattern the verb will follow. Uh, otherwise, if you uh, were trying to kind of think to yourself, what what is the stress pattern here? Or maybe you look it up in another dictionary that doesn't uh, mark it the way I do, right? Just kind of a normal learner's dictionary. Well, most most dictionaries like that will give you the, the ya and the ti form, right? Just the first two conjugated forms. Why do they do that? Well, first of all, it allows you to establish a mutation pattern in most cases, right? Uh, you know, it, for example, does the ya form mutate? Uh, but uh, also it allows you to establish the stress pattern, right? With certainty, right? Uh, so let's look at a few examples and see how, if we have the ya and the tu form, we can definitely know what the stress pattern is. So platit, if we're given plachu, platish, we see that's shifting stress, right? And that tells us the, the remainder of the stress, uh, the, the stress on the remainder remainder of the forms, right? Plachu, plaitish, plaitit, plaitim, plaitit, plaitit. Okay, number two, gvarit. Okay, gvariu, gvarish. Okay, that's enough to know that we have in stress, right? So it's going to remain there throughout all the forms. Gvariu, gvarish, gvarit, gvarim, gvarit, gvariat. Uh, number three, kupit. 
Uh, okay, we're given kuplu kupish. All right, that's enough to know. We have shifting stress. It'll be kuplu, but then shifting back kupish kupit kupim kupitje kupit. Okay, number four uchit uchu uchish shifting stress. So it'll be uchu, but then uchish uchit uchim uchti uchit. Number five sidiet siju sidish. Okay, that's in stress. So it's going to stay on the ending everywhere. Siju, sidish, sidit, sidim, sidichi, sidiat. Number six, smatrich, smatru, smotrish. Okay, shifting stress. So the pattern will be smatru, but then shifting back. Smotrish, smotrit, smotrim, smotritje, smotrit. Okay, let's look at the E endings. Remember, this is the second of two sets of endings Russian verbs can take. We've seen the U endings, and we've been using those for two days now. Uh, but the verb types we're learning, learning today are taking these E endings. So let's look these over, and we see we can compare the two, of course, right? Uh, the E endings, um, we can think, when we're adding these to verbs, we should think here of the U sort of as our default, right? And then the um, eight-letter spelling rule may come in and tell us we can't write U. Instead, we have to write U. Uh, again, we'll see how that works out in practice uh, as we see, see examples. But so ya is going to, the ya form is going to end in U or sometimes U based on spelling rules. And then we see the uh, next four forms are very much like the ones we saw before. The only difference is that instead of the yo, we have an E, right? Ish, it, im, itye. And that gives you some idea of why we call these E endings in the first place, right? They're, they're uh, marked in, in, in uh, four out of six cases by that E vowel. Now, look at the black box. This is maybe the most commonly missed ending, right? Uh, students, want, they have the urge to write ut or ut here, right? Just like the third plural ending in the your set of endings. But remember, that's the... Di that's the your set, right? The E endings have their own distinct third plural form. We're going to typically, by default, try to write yat, yat, unless, again, the eight-letter spelling rule tells us we can't do that, right? That, and we would have to write at instead, right? So essentially, we should think of our default E endings as you, ish, it, im, itje, yat, yat. Okay, so let's look at our first, uh, let's look at how e-verbs work, right? What makes an e-verb an e-verb? Well, again, we've got to worry about two things. Does it, uh, what set of endings does it take and does it mutate? As we've seen already, e-verbs take the e endings and they mutate in the ya form only whenever a mutation is possible. Okay, and we, we saw that already in the earlier table with that vietic. Right now, we already know essentially what mutations are. Essentially, in certain uh, positions, again, this is this goes back for, to historical reasons. Right, we can't really explain this right now. Uh, well, we could, but we don't have time. And again, it's probably not the most pressing matter at the moment. We're just trying to learn how to conjugate these verbs. Right, essentially, in certain positions, a given consonant will mutate and become a different consonant. Okay, so in E verbs, that happens in the ya form only. Now, if we think back to the other type where we saw mutations, or, well, one of them, a verbs, right, like besides, we said that a verbs take your endings and show mutations in all forms, right? So there we had pish, from besides, we got pishu, pishish, pishit, right, and that uh, sh remained, that mutation remained in all the conjugated forms. In E verbs, uh, the mutation is only possible in the ya form, right? The ya form, that final consonant, is going to mutate if it can, right? Not all consonants can mutate. Uh, and then the remaining forms are not going to mutate, right? So let's see what we mean. Let's look at some examples here. Atvietic, um, right? Our final stem consonant there is a t, and we get the mutation, uh, t becomes ch, right? And we get that mutation in the ya form only. Uh, so we get atvietchu, atvietish, atvietit, atvietim, atvietitye, atvietit. Okay, what about the next verb? 
platit. Okay, same final stem consonant, te. So because this is an E verb, that te is going to mutate in the ya form only. We get plachu, platish, platit, platim, platitia, platit. Um, by the way, you might compare if you're wondering, plachu, we had earlier, uh, meaning means I cry, and plachu means uh, I pay, right? Uh, we may mention that at some later date as well. Okay, anyway, uh, it's, it's, those are two verbs that are easy to confuse for beginning students. Okay, next for prasit, meaning to request something, to ask someone to do something. Okay, the final stem consonant is s. And as we learned with pisait, right, uh, when an S mutates in Russian, it mutates to sh, right? So here we get that in the ya form only, prashu, but then elsewhere we're back to our original consonant, prosish, prosit, prosim, prosit, prosit. Okay, one more with S, prasit. This means to ask uh, or inquire, right? That is, ask a question. Sprashu. Right, there's our mutation, but then we're back to s, sprosish, sprosit, sprosim, sprositje, sprosit. Okay, so in the four verbs we just saw, um, essentially a mutation occurred, right? Now we, it's best to say that for e verbs, a mutation occurs in the ya form only if a mutation is possible. Right, so uh, as we just mentioned, not all Russian consonants can mutate, right? The ones we just saw, of course, can. A te can mutate, and so in e verbs, it does mutate, right? It can mutate, and so it does in the ya form only. Same thing goes for s, right? S, the Russian consonant can mutate, and so it does, right? It, it mutates to sh in the ya form only. Now, uh, there's another set of consonants called labials, and labial, the term labial simply means that it, it's something pronounced using the lips, right? So if we say a consonant is labial, it means we have to use our lips to pronounce that consonant. So let's take three examples, b, v, p. Okay, if you're wondering, you know, b, let's take b, or same thing would be for English b, right? Is b a, a labial consonant? Well, simply pronounce the consonant, Bleh, buh, 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 right? Clearly, you're losing, you're using your lips. Okay, so that's a labial. Let's try that with v, right? V, you use, you're using your lip, lips, so it's a labial. Same thing with pa, pa, right? Clearly, you're using your lips, to, your lips to make that sound. It's a labial. Okay, do labial consonants mutate? By the way, these aren't the only three. There are a few more, uh, but these are the only examples we have for now. Uh, okay, do labial um, consonants mutate in Russian? Yes, and they do so in a rather odd way. They mutate by adding a soft L, right? So if we have a B, and that B is in a position where it can mutate, it does, right? And namely to B, B, right? Or V mutates to V, V, and P to P, P. Right, okay, so it's a little bit hard to say that all by itself, and uh, luckily we're going to be adding an ending onto that mutation. But again, we've got the labial, b, v, or p, plus a soft l. Okay, so uh, let's look at three examples, right? Let's take lubit, to love. Okay, uh, so our final stem consonant is b, and lubit is an e verb. That means we're going to get a mutation in the ya form only, if a mutation is possible. Okay, our final consonant is b. Can b mutate? Yes, we just learned that, right? It's going to mutate by adding a soft l. And so that's what we get in the ya form, lublu, lublu. But in the remaining forms, we're back to simply b. Lubish, lubit, lubim, lubitje, lubit. Okay, uh, what about v? Well, let's look at a verb like gatovic, meaning to prepare, or it can also mean to cook. Uh, okay, we're gonna, it's an e verb. We're gonna see a mutation in the ya form only if a mutation is possible. Is a mutation possible? Well, our final consonant is v. V is a labial, it can mutate in Russian, and so it's going to here. 
by adding the soft L. That gives us gatovlyu. But then in the remaining forms, we're back to V, right? Gatovish, gatovit, gatovim, gatovitye, gatovyet. Okay, uh, pre, kupit, kupit, to buy. Can pre mutate? Yes, it's a labial. It can mutate, and so it does in the ya form only. Kupliu, but then we're back to kupish, kupit, kupim, kupitye, kupit, sorry, kupit, kupit. Uh, you may have noticed, by the way, that remember, unstressed ya reduces to more of a y, y, right? So it can be actually quite hard to hear. Uh, to hear that, uh, you know, we don't say lubiat, gatovyat, kupiat, right? We say something more like lubiat, gatovyat, kupiat, kupiat, right? So uh, it can sound a little bit like the third singular form sometimes. Uh, so listen, of course, the the main distinction is the ye, right? Kupiat, ye, right? We're getting the ye sound. So compare kupit, kupit, to the third singular kupit, kupit, or just simply pi, 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 with no pie, pie, right? Okay, uh, we look at the poster quickly. Here we have an imperative form, lubitje rodinu, lubitje rodinu, love your homeland. Okay, let's uh, pause here for a moment and uh, look at these, uh, right, practice using these verbs that show mutations, right? Again, because they just happen to end in a consonant that can mutate, and so it does mutate in the ya form only. Okay, let's just do a few of these. First column, let's use platit, right, to pay. Kto platit sivornya? Who's paying today? Okay, so our infinitive is platit. Ya, okay, let's think. The ya form is going to mutate, so from platit, the te mutates and we get plachu. Ya plachu sivonya. Ya plachu sivonya. And I note the stress, right? If we say plachu, it means I'm crying today, right? From plakit. Right? So instead of not ya plachu sivonya, that would mean I'm crying today, but here we want ya plachu. Ya plachu sivonya. Number two, we are paying today. Mui platim. Mui platim sivonya. Number three, ana. Platit Sivodnya. And number four, Ani Platit Platit Sivodnya. Okay, let's use Advietit. Kto Advietit na vapros? Who will answer the question? Number five, let's say he'll, he'll answer the question. On Advietit na vapros. On Advietit na vapros. Number six, everyone will answer the question. Vsie Advietit. Все ответят на вопрос. Number seven, I'll answer the question. Okay, here's the ya, right? So we're going to see a mutation. Я отвечу. Right, я отвечу на вопрос. Number eight, ты, ты ответишь на вопрос. Okay, last column, let's use uh, любить, to love. Кто любит русскую литературу? Who loves Russian literature? Мы любим русскую литературу, right? Любим. Number 10, вы любите русскую литературу. You all love Russian literature. Number 11, everyone loves Russian literature. Все любят русскую литературу. Okay, now number 12, я, yeah, we have to be careful. Okay, let's think. Любить, б, 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 right? That's a labial. So in the ya form, we're going to get that labial mutation by adding a soft L. So we say ya lublu, ya lublu ruskuyu literaturu. Okay, we, that leaves us with one final kind of subcategory of E verbs, right? Uh, so far, every verb we've looked at just by chance basically has happened to end in a consonant that can mutate. Right? Again, not all Russian con uh, consonants can mutate, just sort of by definition. It's just part of how they behave. Again, we could historically delve into all of the uh, reasons for, for these mutations and why some can mutate and others can't or don't. It's kind of a long story. Okay, so uh, what happens if a, an E verb ends in a consonant that can't mutate? Um, 
Well, it doesn't, right? If a constant can't mutate, then of course it's not going to, right? So uh, I guess that's kind of obvious, but again, it's worth pointing out here that, you know, depending on the E verb, just depending on what constant it happens to end in, uh, that's determining whether or not we see mutation. Okay, so if we look over, we have four examples here. Gvarit. Okay, uh, er can't mutate. Now it can be softened. So in some of these instances we're seeing, we, we are actually seeing a kind of mutation, namely a softening, right? You can have a hard R or a soft R. You can have a hard N or a soft N in Russian. Uh, but, you know, it, I don't usually call those mutations because in, in class I use the term mutation to mean a, a complete change of consonant, right? We're really switching from one consonant to a totally different consonant, not simply seeing a softening, right? Uh, so I don't consider these to be mutations, right? And, of course, on a practical level, we don't have to change the spelling. So, um, you know, it's really just not that big of a deal. Right, so we would say here that er, the consonant er does not mutate in Russian. And so it doesn't, right? We get gvaril, gvarish, gvarit, gvarim, gvaritye, gvariat, right? With that in stressed uh, pattern here. Okay, so the er simply by definition can't mutate, and so it doesn't. And so we have er throughout all these forms. Let's take the verb pomnit to remember. Okay, what about N? Can it mutate? Uh, no, it can't, right? Uh, now, we don't really have any way of knowing that yet. We know uh, that N can soften, right? It can. You can have a hard N or a soft N. Uh, but now we know that N doesn't mutate. Uh, by the way, we've already seen in the examples, we've seen a lot of the major mutations, right? So it's really a fairly limited number of Russian consonants that can mutate. We've already seen most of the major ones. Okay, so N can't mutate, and so it doesn't, right? That gives us pomnyu, pomnyish, pomnyet, pomnyum, pomnitye, pomnyet. Okay, let's move on to uchit. Okay, here it's an E verb. Uh, its final consonant is ch. Can, can ch mutate? Uh, no, it can't. It simply can't. And in fact, we've seen that other consonants can mutate too. They can become ch. They can mutate to ch, like ka or the, right? But ch itself, there's no, there's nowhere else to go once you arrived at ch, right? So ch does not mutate. Uh, so that means here we don't see a mutation. We get uchu, uchish, uchit, uchim, uchitye, uchit. So finally, we have poluchit. Right, another verb that happens to uh, have a stem ending in ch, right, which can't mutate any further. Uh, so it doesn't, right? That gives us paluchu, paluchish, paluchit, paluchim, paluchitye, paluchit. By the way, note that the, those final two examples, right, uh, with the stem in ch, uh, these give us examples of the effect of the eight letter spelling rule, right? We might have wanted to write you in that first form, we, like uchu, paluchu, but we can't, right? The eight-letter spell, spelling rule tells us we write u instead. Same thing for the final form, right? It's not uchiat or paluchiat, right? We can't have a ya after that hushing consonant, ch, right? So instead we write a, and we get uchit, paluchit. Okay, let's fill in some of these examples. Again, these verbs we're practicing here don't show a mutation. Кто получит письмо? Who will receive a letter? Okay, I will receive a letter. Я получу письмо. Okay, we have to be careful about the stress pattern, right? We need to think back to the, uh, or look up the infinitive получить. Uh, it's a shifting stress verb. So the я form is going to have in stress, right? Получу. Я получу письмо. But in the others, it's going to jump back, right? So we will receive a letter is мы получим письмо. Мы получим письмо. What about three? Вы получите письмо. Number four, все получат. Все получат письмо. Again, check the spelling there. Eight-letter spelling rule. Okay, next let's use помнить. Uh, помнить. 
кто помнит ответ? Who remembers the answer? Let's say she remembers the answer. Она помнит ответ. Она помнит ответ. Number six, we remember the answer. Мы помним ответ. Seven, you remember the answer. Ты помнишь, помнишь ответ. Number eight, я помню. Я помню ответ. I remember the answer. Yeah, by the way, помнить, right? We can see just by looking at the infinitive, помнить, that it's stem stress, right? It's going to show stem stress, stem stress everywhere. Okay, finally, let's use говорить to speak. Кто хорошо говорит по-русски? Who speaks Russian well? Мы хорошо говорим по-русски. Okay, this is an end stress verb. Next we have ты. Ты хорошо говоришь по-русски, right? Ты говоришь, again, end stress. Number 11, я хорошо говорю по-русски. And number 12, все хорошо, все, everyone, все хорошо Говорят по-русски. All the people, everyone, right, все говорят по-русски. Remember again that все is plural in Russian, right? It means literally something more like all people, um, as opposed to the English everyone, which is uh, singular. Okay, so the E verbs are extremely important. They're, they're extremely common. They're one of the most common verb types in Russian, uh, right up there with I verbs and, and OVA verbs in terms of their frequency. Uh, so E verbs are extremely important, and as we know, they take E endings. Now, the second type we have to learn today isn't quite as common, uh, but it does include some, some verbs that are themselves extremely common, right? Uh, so it's really important to learn as well. Now, this is another verb type that always causes confusion, uh, and it's a shame, really, because it shouldn't, uh, although it's understandable why it happens. The, the new, the next verb type um, we'll refer to as yeah verbs. Yeah verbs. Okay. Uh, well, now let's think for a moment. E verbs. What what makes e verbs tick? How do we define an e verb? An e verb takes e endings and shows mutation in the ya form only whenever mutation is possible. Okay. How do we define yeah verbs? Yeah verbs take e endings and show a mutation in the ya form only when every mutation is possible. Okay, so we can see already that in terms of conjugated forms, these two verb types are going to work in exactly the same way. In fact, their conjugated forms are gonna be completely indistinguishable. Uh, the only difference in these verbs uh, in terms of their, their, their forms comes up in the past tense, right? Uh, in the past tense, we'll see the, 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 the stem vowel distinction, right? We will preserve the yeah as opposed to an e. Okay, but that's for another day, right? We don't need to get into that right now. Uh, so let's look at a few examples here. And again, just try to, to square away the idea that these yeah verbs are acting exactly like the e verbs we just learned, right? But again, for various reasons, we, we do need to group them separately. All right, for one obvious reason, right? The, uh, the infinitive ends in a, uh, yet, right? So we have eat. Uh, eat makes the e verbs usually pretty easy to spot. Uh, yet verbs uh, can be can be harder to spot. Now we'll talk more about this down the road once we we're more comfortable with verbs generally. But we can see already that uh, just as we had this problem with infinitives ending in at, right? We see an infinitive ending in at. Well, what's the verb type? Is it an i verb? Is it an a verb? It uh, could also be an ova verb, but in that case, we would be able to determine its type. Uh, now, uh, remember that we already, uh, yesterday actually, we, we already saw uh, a verb type, namely yay verbs, that uh, also has infinitives ending in yet, right? Like stariet, right? To become old, stariet. Okay, so that was a yay verb. Now, a verb, the verb sidiet is a yeah verb, right? So again, another case where we see an infinitive ending yet, and it could belong to at least two different uh, verb types, right? So again, we, we see why we're going to so much trouble to tag all of these verbs we're learning, because we really need to find an efficient way to categorize them 
as we start to learn these patterns and learn you know which verbs uh, obey which patterns. Okay, so our head verb is sijiech. Uh, how's it going to work? Okay, well, we remember it's going to take e endings and show a mutation in the ya form whenever possible. Can they mutate in Russian? Yes, of course. We've seen it already. Actually, I think. Uh, have we seen it? Maybe we haven't. I don't remember. Okay, anyway, the de, de does mutate, right? De mutates to a je, right? And uh, so we get si ju as our ya form. Right with the mutation, but everywhere else we're back to de. Sidish, sidid, sidim, sidiche, sidiat. Okay, another verb, vidit, to see. Okay, same stem consonant, a de. Can it mutate? Yes, and so it does. Viju, vidish, vidit, vidim, viditye, vidit. Okay, one more verb, nina vidit. Uh, this verb means to hate, and it's one of those verbs that's interesting to think uh, sort of etymologically about its literal meaning, right? Uh, it, it means to not look upon, right? Nye, na, which means upon, vidit, to, to not look upon someone or to, to refuse to see someone, meaning you despise someone so much that you refuse to grace them with your gaze, I guess, right? Okay, at any rate, ninavidic uh, means to hate. Its final stem consonant is, again, de. All our examples here are in de, right? So it mutates to j, right? Ninavizu, ninavidish, ninavidit, ninavidim, ninaviditye, ninavidit. Okay, our final ye verb is smatrej, which means to look or watch, right? Now compare that to simply seeing, right? Two different things. Uh, it's a ye verb. We've been told that. We, we have to, right? We don't know this verb. Okay, so we know it's a ye verb. Its final stem consonant is er. Can er mutate? No, it can't. We already saw that just a moment ago with gvarit, right? Okay, so it can mutate and so it doesn't. So we get smatru, smotrish, smotrit, smotrim, smotritje, smotrit. Okay, let's do a quick drill, just filling in the, filling in some uh, ye verbs, uh, namely сидеть, смотреть, and ненавидеть. Okay, so we have a fun little dialogue here. Um, Почему он все время сидит и смотрит телевизор? Why does he all the time sit and watch television? Потому что он ненавидит общение, because he hates socializing. Общение means socializing. Okay. Почему uh, они, okay, there's our subject, они. Почему они все время сидят и смотрят, смотрят телевизор? Потому что они ненавидят общение. They hate socializing. Ненавидят. Now remember that those ani forms, if the stress isn't on the ending, we get some reduction and it makes them a little bit hard to distinguish, right? On ninavidit, ani ninavidit, right? Ninavidit. Very hard to hear the difference at first. Okay, number two. Почему Сергей все время сидит и смотрит телевизор? Okay, another third singular example, like in the model. Потому что он ненавидит общение. He hates socializing. Number three. Почему Марина все время сидит и смотрит телевизор? Another third singular. Потому что она ненавидит общение. Number four. Почему все все время... Okay, there's все as our subject, meaning uh, everyone, right? Why does everyone sit and watch television? Почему все все время сидят и смотрят телевизор? Потому что все ненавидят общение. Everyone hates socializing. Number five. Почему я все время? Okay, я, 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 я. We've got to watch out. Mutations are going to happen wherever possible. Почему я все время сижу? Сижу и смотрю. Смотрю телевизор. Потому что... Ты всегда, sorry, потому что ты ненавидишь 
I'm shaming you, right? So there's the response, right? Why do I watch television? Because you hate socializing. Ты ненавидишь общение. Number six. Почему вы все время сидите и смотрите телевизор? Why are you sitting around all the time and watching television? Потому что мы ненавидим общение, right? We hate socializing. There's a nice uh, little пословица uh, with our verb we just learned. Рыбак рыбака видит издалека. A fisherman a fisherman sees from far away. Now, the first rybak, fisherman, is our subject. Our second uh, word for fisherman, rybaka, is in the accusative, which in this case looks just like the genitive. Okay, file that away. We're going to talk about that in a lot of detail here very soon. Uh, but essentially, the first word, rybak, is the subject. The second, rybaka, is the direct object. Okay, let's do one more exercise, 15e and look at some types that all involve a, a mutation of one kind or another. Okay, so but kind of a quick summary, right? And we don't, it's one of those things in Russian, we don't want to get this idea that, oh my God, mutations are going to be constantly happening for no uh, apparent reason all over the place, right? We've got to kind of uh, get our paranoia under control and just realize, okay, you know, th these aren't going to happen all the time, right? So let's, let's now re review quickly the types where we have seen mutation and review where the mutations occur. Okay, so let's start with uh, platit. Okay, that's an E verb, so we've just learned that today. E verbs are going to mutate in the ya form only if a mutation is possible. Can te mutate? Yes. It can mutate to ch, and so it does. So we get ya plachu. Ya plachu, now shifting stress, sh stress shifts backwards. And we lose the mutation. Ты платишь, они платят. What about смотреть? Okay, that's a ye yeah verb we've just learned. Uh, that means it's going to mutate in the ya yeah form if possible. Uh, is a mutation possible here? No, we have er, right? Er can't mutate, so it doesn't. So we get ya yeah смотрю. Now, shifting stress. Ты смотришь, они смотрят. Okay, number three, there's an a verb. Think back to a couple of days ago. Uh, can a verbs mutate? Do they show mutations? Yes, they do in all forms, all conjugated forms. Okay, can the ka mutate? Yes, it can mutate to ch, and so we get that here in all forms. Ya plachu, I cry. Tui plachish, you cry. Ani plachut. Okay, number four. Much. Okay, that was a very tricky one, right? Remember, um, and we're not going to see many verbs like this, especially not for the time being. Ya uh, magu, uh, ya magu. Okay, we've got shifting stress, and remember that this verb mutates in the inner forms. Okay, that's very unusual. This is this is a very weird verb type. There are only two like this. There are only two types like this. They're at the very bottom of the uh, table in the back of the book. Okay, so the middle form there, tu, will be mojish, mojish, right? Yamagu, tu mojish, ani mogut. Okay, so you see the outer form, so called, they're showing the g, and then in that one inner form we have here, we're seeing the j. Magu, mojish, mogut. Number five, lubit. Okay, that's an e verb. Uh, the final consonant is b, 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 b. That's a labial. Right, we can tell just by sounding it, by pronouncing it. Okay, so the ya form is going to mutate, and we get lu blu, lu blu. Then the remaining forms were back to ba, tu, lubish. Note the shifting stress. Lu blu, lubish, lubiet. Okay, number six, prasit. Shifting stress, e verb. So that means mutation in the ya form only. Can uh, S mutate? Yes. And so it is SH. So we get a mutation. We get YAS PRASHU. But then elsewhere, TI SPROSISH ANI SPROSIET. Right, we're back to the S. Okay, PAKAZAT. PAKAZAT. Uh, that's an A verb again. So it's going to show mutations in all forms, right? Z mutates to Z. So we get YA PAKAZU. I will show. You will show. Они покажут. 
Okay, number eight, kupit. Okay, shifting stress, e verb, uh, ends in a pre, right? Pre, can pre mutate? Yes, it's a labial. So we get ya kupliu. Ya kupliu. Now the stress shifts backwards. We lose the mutation. Tli kupish, ani kupiet. Number nine, skazait. Another a verb. Mutations in all forms. Uh, the z mutates to j. Uh, and we have shifting stress. So ya skazhu. Tli skazhish, ani skazhut. Okay, that does it. Uh, pat yourself on the back. You're, you've made it through three days of hell, right? Learning these conjugations. Okay, so again, uh, it's going to be hard to just master these overnight. It's going to take lots of practice. And uh, again, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And uh, in time, you'll just kind of develop a knack for doing it, uh, as long as you practice enough. Um, again, we haven't seen all the verb types. I guess we've seen maybe around half of them, or at least a third of them. And we've seen some of the major ones, like, again, I, E, OVA, uh, and to a lesser extent, A verbs, and maybe new verbs. Those are some of the most common uh, types that we've seen so far. Uh, by the way, the yeah verbs that we saw today are also fairly common. Uh, okay, so uh, that does it for our uh, three-day uh, epic journey through verb conjugation. Uh, things should get slightly more interesting in the next few lessons. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, verbal aspect, for example, as I've mentioned, which is something uh, rather unusual and rather difficult, and hopefully for that reason, uh, reasonably interesting. Okay, so uh, until next time, do svidanya, tavarishi. Oh.